Is there other stories, or maybe you can speak out at a high level, what are you hoping to tell? And all these different stories that are weaved about, um, that that connect the, um, the tragedies and the triumphs, the heroism of uh, of that day and the and the days and the years that followed. You know, Lex, it seems like the common few themes, the common threads, are being selfless, helping out others, even though they might be a stranger. In acts of kindness, acts of love, and it seems to all be weaved together with faith. They all seem to have some sort of faith. I mean, we have one gentleman. Uh, Mark Hanna, and he he's a Coptic Egyptian priest, and he's an and he's an immigrant to the United States. He was a Port Authority building engineer, and with his crew, who subsequently passed away, the crew did. Uh, he was effectively rescuing dozens of people on the upper floors, and his boss ordered him to assist an elderly gentleman who was eighty nine down seventy eight flights of stairs to get him out. And in stopping on the 21st floor, he figured they would just wait there for medics. He came across Captain Patty Brown of Ladder Company 3, who told him, no, sir, you need to evacuate. And Captain Brown picked his brain a little bit about the structure because he figured, found out he was an engineer. And Captain Patty Brown continued on to effect rescues, and he and his crew were killed. But father, he's now, Mark was able to e effectively evacuate this gentleman they were the two known last survivors to come out of the tower. He now has dedicated his life to becoming a Coptic priest in St. Mary's Church in East Brunswick, New Jersey. He did this for a total stranger. And he said he was inspired by his, his bosses who died and uh, his friends. You know, one of his best friends was an Italian man. The other man was a, a retired Navy SEAL, Hispanic man. And they were part of this melting pot. And no one looked at each other that day, what color, what race, what belief are you? They just said, hey, you're a human in need, let's go. And you know, we, we have uh, the story about John Feel on his mission to, to help the responders. Um, we have a young lady, Mariah, who's, whose birth father was on Flight 93. She had not even met him. <laughs> and she had this premonition that somebody in her family was killed that day. And, and, and her, her adopted mom said, no, everyone's fine. Well, three years later, when she was legally able to find out who her dad was, she found out that her dad, Tom, was actually on that plane mm -hmm. as part of the Let's Roll team. And we have a gentleman, Robert Burke, who's uh, an actor, sweetheart of a man. He's a gentleman, and he's a very, very popular actor in Hollywood. He was on Rescue Me, Blue Bloods, Gossip Girls. And, and Bobby, my friend, as I call him, is, is a volunteer fireman now. This man doesn't need to get out of bed at two o'clock in the morning and help people with a stroke or a burning garage or a burning house, but he does because he wants to, because his best friend was Captain Patty Brown and his other best friend was Father Michael Judge, mm -hmm. who was our chaplain, who was killed literally blessing victims at the site, had just given last rites to the firefighter I mentioned earlier, Danny, who was killed. And Father Judge was in the lobby of the building giving a blessing, praying to God to please stop this and he was struck by debris and he was killed. And Bobby goes on to elaborate about Father Judge's story. Father Judge used to walk the streets of New York City helping AIDS patients just with whatever they needed. And he was a Franciscan friar. They wear sandals and a robe. They're just, they just live very humble lives of, and it's just the common denominator is loving each other and helping each other, regardless if you know the person or not. And really, when you think about it, that's how America was made. We, we, we fought for independence. Stranger fought next to stranger and, and fought tyranny because they wanted freedom. They wanted to be able to live, love, pray, and prosper. And they fought and died alongside of strangers. And it's, it's sort of symbolic of what happened that day. And then strangers from around this great country just flocked in by the thousands to help. They didn't know who was in that pile, but they didn't care. That was another American. And what I ultimately am trying to do involved in this beautiful project is spread the message of doing the right thing. Look at these examples, these brave people who didn't have to, especially the civilians, they weren't paid to run back in there and help person after person. And they had no obligation. 
They could have just said, hey, man, I'm out of here and just bolted. But they didn't. So we're just trying to say to people, let's bring back that unity and that feeling of 912. As strange as 912 of a day it was, it was so sad because it we it was the first dawn of the sun where we realized this wasn't a dream, this was real, and it's not going away. But the beauty of it was there was thousands of people lined up along the West Side Highway with signs and American flags, mm -hmm. and they were from every country and every race and every creed, and it didn't matter who they were, but they all shared one bond, love. And they were hugging and crying and thanking rescuers, and it, brought the morale so high for a group of people that was so beaten down the day before. It just started lifting the morale and making us realize, you know what? People really do give a crap. They really do love each other. And now I'm going to be honest with you, I've been doubting that a little bit lately. I still have these examples of it, you know, that lady who helped me last night with the phone and just, <laughs> you know, I know there's these shining little examples, but sometimes I think, I don't know. Are we running out of them? Well, I got to give you some advice. So there's uh, two words that were repeated often um, uh, in the days and the years after 9-11, which is never forget. Yep. So may I, might I remind you to never forget about 9-12. I mean, those words uh, you talked about that, you know, there's people, what is it, college freshmen, yeah. maybe. They weren't even born. They weren't even born. And there's people in the 20s that were too young to remember, to understand the events of that day. But I think what that day, as you're describing, means it's not about a terrorist attack. It's about the unity that followed. It was tremendous, Lex. I never felt so proud. I was always proud of this country. You know, I remember my grandpa Nels used to walk by, I'd see a flag, or hear a Star Spangled Banner, and he'd tear up. And I'd say, Grant, why, why are you crying? He said, I'm not crying, it's the tears of joy. I love this country so much. And I just remember like feeling that way. I felt that way 9-10, I felt that way on 9-11, but then on 9-12, I was just so proud of just the people, the way they stepped up. And I just wanna try to see if that can happen again. And I hope it's, it's not necessary for us to have another tragedy to bring that about. Let's do that without the tragedy. Let's just stop and say, hey, you know what? Let me listen to what this guy has to say. And maybe he's, he probably won't convince me, but maybe I'll go, well, you know, I never thought of it that way. Stop the finger pointing, the bickering, the tantrums, the fighting. It's just not necessary. It gets you nowhere, right? It's like, you know, I was two years old and I'd stomp around because I wanted a cookie or a piece of candy. I still didn't get it, right? You know, turned blue in the face and uh, whatever, got a swat in the rear end, but it didn't get the candy. And that's what we got going on right now. Everybody's just stomping around, being a baby. Being... Stop, just stop. We're really lucky. Look, the country's not perfect, right? You know, but it's damn good. Yeah. It gives us all these opportunities. You know, like I said, no one's rushing out the gates to get out of here. They're, they're freaking, I got a cousin of mine, I love him dearly, my cousin Tony in Ireland. And he said, he's, he's just a little older than me. He's in his 50s. He said, man, I should have done it. I should have went to America. My dad said, go to America. I went to England. And he, and he, and he went back to Ireland. And, you know, he, but he's happy in Ireland. It's his yeah. home. But he said, wow, what a, what a place of opportunity. And I said, it's never too late. He goes, yeah, but you know what? You, you get tied down. And I understand that. I thank God my mom came here at 16. I thank God my grandpa got on that ship at, in his 20s, 27, I think, you know, with not a, not a nickel to rub together. I thank God they did it because I don't know where else I would have ended up. There's no place else I want to be. And uh, I thank God that there's people like you who rushed towards ground zero to help other human beings. And I believe that 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 human spirit is ultimately represents the best of this country and the best of this world. You know, thank you for the stories you're telling, for your perseverance in that. And uh, thank you for welcoming me to the crew. <laughs> You're very welcome. I'm proud. And uh, <laughs> we'll take you any day. You look like you could do the job just fine. I but, love lifting heavy uh, things and doing right. dangerous things. <laughs> so um, it's, well, I'm proud to be part part of this country and part of uh, the Tally Hall now. Well, you are you are definitely an attribute to America, and we're glad you chose to come here. Um, you know, Lex, it's 
it's such a beautiful place. It's a beautiful melting pot. You know, if we were all the same, it would be kind of a boring yeah, place, right? Kind of boring. Let's it really it would. But it just <laughs> it's just such a great place. And I just want to say thanks. It's an honor. It's an honor to have someone to let me sound off. And and it'll be even bigger honor if somebody will listen to me and just say, Hey, you know, let me just try to do something good today. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's that's the tunnel to towers mantra is let us do good. And I just, uh, you know, I uh, I got a really big credit card with God, a big balance, right? I, I need to pay him back a lot, and I need to pay him forward. And I'm just going to spend the rest of my days trying my best. I don't know where this is going to go, what it'll lead into, but I really would like to get those dogs for those vets, build them that village, and, and just keep going on from project to project to just say, when my final day comes, and I'm laying there and I say, you know what? I really made the most of that second chance God gave me way back in 2011. I mean, I hope it's 30, 40 years from now, but even if it's 30 months from now, I'm giving it the best shot. So thank you, sir. I appreciate it and uh, wishing you blessings and success in your yeah. career. Keep up the good fight. And you're always welcome back to Texas. Well, I love it. Uh, it's <laughs> great food and uh, a little hot. A little hot, but ah, I, come on. I, I can deal with it. You know, we, we don't do so good uh, Irish in the sun, you know, but... Uh, well, the barbecue but, and the people oh, are yeah. worth it. No, they are. They're awesome. I, I was down here for some storm relief a few years ago, um, and I tell you what, I fell in love with it. The people are great. It's a great state, and uh, yeah, I'll definitely, uh, definitely be back again for sure. Thanks for talking to Danielle. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.